Thank you to the organizers for inviting me here to Winnipeg. I'm the Member of Parliament for Burnaby Douglas, so I'm a little out of my area tonight, uh, but I'm very happy to be back in Winnipeg once again, and especially on this very important occasion where we remember the dropping of the atomic bombs on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the hundreds of thousands of lives that were lost in those instants. Uh, it is something that we need to live with and continue to live with as, uh, as citizens of this planet. Um, I think it's really important to talk about what we do as citizens in light of that experience, what we do in light of uh, that incredible power that was unleashed on this planet 65 years ago. And I think all of us here, we're here because we believe that something needs to be done and because we have taken action. Everybody here has taken some kind of action. That's what brought you here tonight whether it's here in the community of Winnipeg, whether it's in your families, whether it's in your church or temple or mosque, uh, whether it's in uh, an organization, another organization that you belong to, whether it's nationally in our country, uh, whether it's building a lantern tonight to send off into, uh, into, the, uh, into the darkness later on. All of us are here because we've been working on this important, uh, important project. And all of those actions that we've been taking have been crucial. To, uh, to doing that paradigm shift that we've heard about already tonight. Now there are other people who work on very specific projects and I'm going to talk about one of those uh, this evening. It's the, the, uh, the bill to create a Department of Peace in our federal government. Uh, there are many people in Canada who've been working on that important project. Uh, the Department of... Thank you. Yeah, we should give them a big round of applause. It's not a new idea, it's been around for a few years. Uh, an organization called the Department of Peace Initiative has put forward the proposal here in Canada in a very detailed proposal. There's a, a group of the Department of Peace Initiative meeting and starting to meet, I believe, here in, in Winnipeg as well. Uh, it's a, an organization, an initiative that's happening around the world. I think there are over 35, uh, 40 countries where there are people working on this kind of proposal. And in fact, there are several countries that have already implemented it. Uh, Solomon Islands, Nepal, and Costa Rica already have Departments of Peace. I think it's interesting that Costa Rica is one of the leaders in that movement. Costa Rica is a very interesting country, having decided in the 1940s to get rid of their military altogether and instead put that money into health care and education and to show leadership on issues of disarmament around the world. I think we can be thankful for the model that Costa Rica offers to all of us, all countries around the world. Nepal is also an interesting example because they've taken the Department of Peace initiative idea and turned it into a truth and reconciliation process in their country, given the political turmoil that they've experienced in recent years. So this is an initiative that's happening around the world, and here in Canada, there's been a dedicated group of people. There were two Canadians, Saul Arbus, a professor at the University of Victoria, and Bill Benasia, a retired Canadian diplomat who lives in Ottawa, who actually put together a draft piece of legislation, a very detailed draft piece of legislation. And uh, I happened to be at one of their meetings and uh, heard about this uh, legislation and said, we should have that tabled in the House of Commons. And uh, a Liberal Member of Parliament, Jim Karajanis from, uh, Scar from Agent Court in Toronto, Jim was there as well. And he said, that's a good idea, we should work on that together. And so we committed to the Department of Peace Initiative people that we would take their idea and see if it needed to be tweaked to get it into shape, to have it introduced in the House of Commons. And last fall, we finally tabled that piece of legislation in the House of Commons. Yeah, it was an exciting day, and it was a nonpartisan day where we had a New Democrat and a Liberal uh, working together to see this proposal put before Parliament. Now, the, the legislation is an interesting piece of legislation. What it seeks to do is ensure that there's a cabinet minister, a senior cabinet minister, who's responsible for ensuring that peace is on the agenda of cabinet, who is responsible for advocating for peace at the cabinet table. Now, right now, we've, we've often thought of Canada as a peacemaking country, and we've seen Canada in the past 
take some significant peace initiatives that have been very, uh, very important to, uh, to world history, very important to how we get along as uh, nations of the world. But more often than not, the peace agenda is on the corner of a, another minister's desk. It may be a special project on the desk of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. It may be something that the Minister of Defense is particularly interested in. Or if we're lucky, it may be something that's of particular importance to the Prime Minister. But there's no one charged at the cabinet table specifically with advocating for peace, with advocating for non-violent, peaceful resolution of disputes, uh, either domestically or internationally. Now, as I say, sometimes we're lucky and that, uh, that agenda gets put forward front and center at the cabinet, but not always. And so this initiative, the Department of Peace Initiative, seeks to charge one member of the cabinet with that specific responsibility. It seeks to give them departmental resources, back up in the public service with public servants, servants who will give them the resources, the information, the support they need to put forward that agenda. And it's a broad agenda. It includes restorative justice programs, programs where the community, the, uh, the victim, the person who's committed a crime, work together to restore the relationships that were broken because of the committing of that crime. And we have many terrific examples here in Manitoba and other provinces of communities that have worked for that kind of restorative justice program. And certainly uh, our Aboriginal communities have given us great models in terms of restorative justice. It would do things like prevention of violence and crime, looking for those causes, the things that are going to lead to violence in our communities, and taking steps to prevent them early on before they, they develop into significant conflicts. It would look at training people to do mediation and conflict resolution. There are lots of people in our country who do that kind of work. We're known internationally for the people we send around the world to do election observation, to do uh, peaceful intervention in conflict situations. But we need more, and there are more people who will do that kind of work. But we want to increase the, the standard for their education and training to make sure they have the background and resources they need to do that important work. We want to make sure that, uh, that, that as a part of the Department of Peace that there are constant resources being put into developing that kind of uh, culture of peace in our government and in our society. And there are many ways that we could do that. Uh, so this cabinet level position would be responsible for ensuring that somebody advocated all the time for that work at the cabinet table. We want to move it off the corner of the desk and put it front and center. That doesn't mean that there won't be a need for activists, for peace activists, for uh, agencies and organizations that lobby for peace. Because no matter what that cabinet minister does, they're going to have to be held accountable. No matter what that government that decides to do this important piece of work does, they're still going to have to be held accountable for their, uh, for their actions. So our work as activists probably won't change very much in all of that, but hopefully that voice for peace will be a part of the structure of our government and that value of Canadians will be represented permanently at the cabinet table. So I think that's the exciting part of the possibility of having a Department of Peace.